This video's topic has been requested by one of my subscribers. If there's a topic you'd like to see in the next video, just subscribe and leave me a comment. So in this one we're going to look at 3D trigonometry in Pythagoras. In order to do this topic you need to be good at both of these in two dimensions first. For 2D Pythagoras we take a right angled triangle, we label the two shorter sides as A and B, and the longer side the hypotenuse as C. We can then use the formula a squared plus b squared equals c squared to find one of the missing sides. For 2D trigonometry we take a right angled triangle, and if we label the angle x, we then label the sides the hypotenuse opposite the right angle, the opposite opposite the angle given, and the adjacent is next to the angle given, we can then write down that the sine of the angle is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse, the cos of the angle is the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse, and tan of the angle is equal to the opposite divided by the adjacent. If you aren't comfortable with either of these topics, I'd suggest you go and revise those first. I'll put some links in the video's description. For this topic, the most common shape in exam questions is a cuboid. We can label the vertices of this cuboid A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. In all of the questions that we're going to look at in this video, we're going to need to find two dimensional right angled triangles, and there are loads that you can find in this shape. Firstly, you could find a right angled triangle that's on any of the faces. So if I connect up A to E, and then E to D, and then go back to A, we have a right angled triangle on this front face here. We could draw a right angled triangle on any of the faces. So if I connected A to B, and then across to D, and then back to A, there's now a right angled triangle on the bottom face. We could even do one on the face on the side here, from C to G, G to D, and back to C, and there's a right angled triangle here. Some of the right angled triangles won't be on the outside faces of the shape. Sometimes they'll go through the shape. So for instance, if I connected B to F, and then F to D, and then back to B again, this would give me a right angled triangle. But this one goes through the shape. You can see the right angle is down at B. You could also have one that starts at B, goes across to G, and then over to H, and back to B again. This one's much harder to see, but it is a right angled triangle. The right angle is up here at G. When the triangle goes through the shape, rather than being on one of the outside faces, it's usually a more difficult question. Now let's have a look at some of the questions you may be asked. So if we label on some of the lengths here, we're going to start with some easier questions. Work out the length of DG. To work out the length of DG, the first thing to do is draw a line connecting D and G. Next, we're going to look for a right angled triangle that involves that line. Since the line DG is just on this outside face here, it makes sense to choose this triangle, the triangle DCG. So the triangle DCG looks like this, and we have the length on the bottom from D to C, which is 3, and the height from C to G is 4. We're trying to find the length of dg here, which is the hypotenuse, so we can just use Pythagoras. So we could say that dg squared is 3 squared plus 4 squared. If you do 3 squared plus 4 squared, you end up with 25, so dg squared is 25. And then to get dg, you square root both sides, so dg would equal 5 centimeters. So that's that question done. dg is 5 centimeters. What about if we were asked to work out the length of ac to one decimal place? Once again, we start by just drawing the line from a to c. Now we look to see if we can find a right angled triangle that involves that line. I can see one on the base of the cuboid here, the triangle ADC. So if I draw out triangle ADC, it looks like this, and we know the base is 10 and the height is 3. We're after the line AC, which is also the hypotenuse, so once again we use Pythagoras. So AC squared is 10 squared plus 3 squared. If you do 10 squared plus 3 squared, you get 109, so A squared is 109. And to find AC, you square root both sides, so AC will be the square root of 109. You'll need a calculator for this one, and you can tell because it says to give it to one decimal place. If you type this into your calculator, you'll find AC is this number here, and to round it to one decimal place, that'd be 10.4 centimeters. Sometimes rather than working out sides, we need to work out angles. So let's say we were asked to find the angle FCG. To find the angle FCG, we need to look at the triangle that involves F, C, and G. You can see we've already got FG and GC marked on, they're the sides of the cuboid, so we need to connect up from FC as well, and it's this triangle here. So if we draw out the triangle FCG, it looks like this, and looking at our cuboid, we can see from C to G is 4cm, and we actually know from F to G as well, since that's the same as from A to D, so that's 10cm. We need to try and find the angle FCG, that's the one in the bottom right, so I'm going to label that as X. Now this time we're going to use trigonometry rather than Pythagoras, since it has an angle. To do this we label up the sides, you can see the one opposite the angle is the 10 centimeters, so that's the opposite, the one that's next to the angle is the 4 centimeters, that's the adjacent. Since we've got the opposite and the adjacent we're going to use tan. So we can write down that tan of the angle, so tan of x, is equal to the opposite, which is 10, divided by the adjacent, which is 4. In this one we're trying to find the angle, so we're going to use inverse tan. 
10 divided by 4 is just 2.5, so we could say that x is equal to inverse tan of 2.5. Type this into your calculator and you'll get this number here. This question has asked us to round it to one decimal place again, so 68.2 degrees. So in all of these questions so far, the key thing to do is to try and find the right angled triangle that involves the information we've been asked for in the question. Sometimes the questions are a little bit more tricky though. Let's have a look at a harder one. So if we add some lengths to this cuboid here, and we're going to try and find the length of AG to one decimal place. AG is this line here. Notice this line isn't on one of the faces of the cuboid, it goes through the shape. So to find the right angled triangle for this one, we're going to have a triangle that goes through the shape again. To show this triangle, I'm going to connect from A to C as well, and you can see that the triangle here goes through the shape, with the right angle in the bottom right corner at C. So if we draw out that triangle, or look like this, triangle ACG, and we know the length from C to G, that's 20 centimeters, but that's actually all the information we know. So if we're going to try and find AG using this triangle, we're going to need to find some more information first, for instance, the length from A to C. So how could we find the length from A to C? Well, to do this, we need to look at a different right angle triangle first. The right angle triangle we need is actually on the base of the cuboid, this one here, ADC. So if we draw out triangle ADC, it looks like this, and we know two of the lengths for this triangle, D to C is eight centimeters and A to D is nine. We can use this information to find AC, which will allow us to find AG in the red triangle. So if we use Pythagoras to find the length of AC, we would say that AC squared is eight squared plus nine squared. If you do eight squared plus nine squared, you get 145. And then if you square root both sides, you'll find the value of AC is the square root of 145, which is this number here. So we've now found AC, we can return to the original red triangle, this one here. We know that AC is 12.04159 and so on. Now, since we're going to use that number in a moment, we're not going to round it off. That's called premature rounding, where you round the number before you finish the question. A much safer thing to do here is rather than writing AC as 12.04 and so on, is we write it as square root 145. The reason this is safer is because square root 145 is the exact length of AC. Now we can go ahead and find AG by using Pythagoras once again on this triangle. To do this, we would say that AG squared is equal to 20 squared plus square root of 145 all squared. And if you type all of that into your calculator, you'll end up with AG squared equals 545. Now to find AG, just square root both sides. So AG will be the square root of 545. And if you type this into your calculator, you get this number here. The question wants the answer to one decimal place, and now that this is the end of the question, we can round the answer, so it's 23.3 centimeters. Sometimes the shape you're given in the question isn't a cuboid. It could be a triangular prism like this one here. For this question, we're going to work out the size of the angle between EC and the plane ABCD. So first of all, let's draw on the line EC, which is this line here, and what does it mean by the plane ABCD? Well, a plane is simply a flat surface, so we need to find the flat surface that connects A, B, C, and D. That's just the base of the triangular prism here. But it's still not immediately clear from our diagram which angle we're trying to find. If you're ever trying to find the angle between a line and a plane, you'll notice that one of the points will be on the plane and one of them isn't. You can see that C is on the plane, but E is above the plane. What you want to do is drop a vertical line down from E until you hit the plane, so that would be down here, and then connect up the two points that are on the plane, so A and C, across here. You can now see that the angle between the line EC and the plane is this angle in here. So let's label that one X. The type of wording used in this question is common for Edexcel, but not AQA. If it were an AQA question, it would probably just say work out the size of angle ACE. So now let's go and solve this question. If I look at the triangle ACE, I don't actually have any of the information for this triangle at all. So I'm going to need to work out at least two bits before I can return to it to find x. First of all, I'm going to look at the triangle that's on the front of the prism here. This will allow me to find the length from A to E. So let's look at the triangle ADE. We know the angle is 20 degrees. We also know the length from E to D because that's the same as the length from F to C. So that must be 14 centimeters. We can now use trigonometry to find A to E. So let's label on, AE will be the opposite, and ED is the hypotenuse, and we don't need AD, that's the adjacent. So for this one, we use the opposite and the hypotenuse, so we need to use sine. So we could say sine of the angle, so sine of 20, is equal to the opposite, which we don't know, so we'll just label that as EA, and divide this by the hypotenuse, which we do know, that's 14. If we multiply both sides by 14, we find that EA is equal to 14 sine 20, which if you type into your calculator, gives you this number here. So now we found the length from E to A, we can add this information to the red triangle. 
so EA is 4.78 and so on. Now in order to find X, we still need more information from this triangle. We're going to try and find the length from E to C next. To do this, we're going to use the triangle from E to F to C. This is on the top face of the prism. So if we draw out this triangle, it looks like this. We know the length from F to C is 14. And we actually know the length from E to F, that's the same as from D to C, so that's 10. We can use Pythagoras to find the length from E to C. So if we do EC squared is 10 squared plus 14 squared. If you use your calculator for this, you'll find that EC squared is equal to 296. And then to get EC, we just square root both sides, so EC will be the square root of 296. Now you could square root this and turn it into a decimal, but since I know I'm going to need this length in a moment, I'm going to leave it in that third form as square root 296. So if I go back over to my red triangle now, I can label from E to C as square root 296. Now we're ready to use this triangle to go ahead and find X. So for this one, it's trigonometry. We label the opposite over here, EA, and we can label the hypotenuse, that's square root 296. And for this one, we need to use sine. So sine of X is the opposite, so this 4.78 and so on number, divide by the square root of 296. Now you need to be really careful when you type that right hand side into the calculator. You cannot just type 4.78, that would be another example of premature rounding. Since this isn't the answer to the question yet, we can't round. So you need to make sure that you get that 4.78 back up on your calculator with all of the decimals after it. So we got the 4.78 and so on by doing 14 sine 20. So do 14 sine 20, and that number will be on your screen, divide that by the square root of 296, and you get this number here. If you did just use 4.78, then you may get a slightly different answer to the real answer. So now we can use inverse sine to find the answer to this angle. We do x equals inverse sine of this number here, which gives us the answer 16.2 when rounded to one decimal place. Another shape that you sometimes see in exam questions is a square based pyramid. We may get a question that says ABCDE is a square based pyramid, and we might be asked to work out the volume of the pyramid. To find the volume of a pyramid, you use the formula 1 third times the base area times the perpendicular height. Now at the moment we don't know the perpendicular height, and we also don't know the base area, so we're going to need to go and find those first, and then return to this formula later. Let's start by trying to find the perpendicular height, which would be from M to E. To do that, we need to use this triangle here. So if we take a closer look at this triangle, we want to find the length from M to E, this will be using trigonometry. So if we label up this triangle, the one opposite the 72, that's the opposite, the one opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse, and the other side is the adjacent. The perpendicular height is from M to E, that's the opposite, and we have the hypotenuse, so we're going to use sine. So sine of 72 will equal the opposite, which we don't know, so we can just call that ME, over the hypotenuse, which is 15. To get ME then, you multiply both sides by 15, so ME is 15 sine 72, which is this number here. Now it will also be helpful in this question to work out the length from M to C. Since MC is the adjacent and we know the hypotenuse, we can use cos. So cos of 72 is equal to the adjacent, so MC, divide by the hypotenuse, which is 15. If you multiply both sides by 15, you find that MC is equal to 15 cos 72, which is this number here. So if we add both of these lengths onto our diagram, we've got the height now of ME, which is 14.2 and so on, and we've also got MC, which is 4.6 and so on. So we've now got the perpendicular height, but we need the base area. We're going to look at this triangle here that's on the base of the pyramid. So if we draw out this triangle, ADC, so we don't know any of the lengths of this triangle at the moment, but we do know there's a point M right in the middle of the line AC, and to get from M to C is 4.6 and so on. Now since M is the midpoint of the line AC, the length from A to M must be the same as the length from M to C. So from A to M is also 4.6 and so on. So if we wanted to find the length from A all the way to C, we would just double this number. Now remember, we're not doubling 4.6 here, we're doubling that whole number 4.6 and so on with all of the remaining digits. So if you get that number back on your calculator screen and double it, you'll end up with 9.27 and so on. Now this is where things get a little bit tricky. We want to find the length of AD and DC, and it doesn't look like we have enough information to find them since we only have one of the sides, but it is possible. This pyramid is a square based pyramid. This means the length from A to D must be the same as the length from D to C, since the base of the pyramid is a square. So whatever AD is, let's call it X, that's the same as DC, so that's also X. So this means the hypotenuse squared, so 9.27 and so on squared, will be the same as the sum of the squares of the other two sides, so X squared and X squared. 
If we leave the left hand side alone, but then add x squared and x squared, we get 2x squared. If you do square the 9.27 and so on, and then divide it by 2, you'll end up with this number here. And if you divide the right hand side by 2, you get x squared. To get x, we can then just square root both sides, so x will be the square root of this number, which gives you this number here. So we've now found the lengths of the square on the base. So from a to d is 6.5 and so on, and so is d to c. We're now ready to finally find the volume of the pyramid. Let's go back to that formula. The volume is one third times the base area times the perpendicular height. So we need to do one third multiplied by the area of the base to find the area of the square. You just multiply its length and its height. So 6.5 and so on times 6.5 and so on. And then we multiply this by the perpendicular height, which we found earlier, that's from m to e, 14.2 and so on. Once again, I cannot stress how important it is that you don't use rounded numbers here. You cannot type 6.5 times 6.5 times 14.2. You need to use the full number that was originally on your calculator screen. So if you do that properly using that whole number, you'll end up with this number here. And since this is the answer to the question we are able to round, this one hasn't actually given us an accuracy, so let's say it was to one decimal place, 204.3 centimeters cubed. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next, subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and go and try the exam questions in this video's description.